Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for following along with my story. So what I'm gonna be talking about today is July 2017. I had just found out I was pregnant with my son. I was five weeks pregnant. Five weeks and five days was the exact number. It was summer, it was really hot. In the years leading up to this time, I had suffered from seasonal allergies. So when I woke up one morning and my chest was really tight and it was kind of hard for me to breathe, I just assumed it was allergies. I knew that I was pregnant, so I couldn't take my usual Allegra, which I still take. So I decided to muscle through it. I decided to go about my day. I was definitely still disabled from the lupus and I was not able to do much, so I was still at home. We had a beautiful garden in the back and I loved cooking and baking so I had a full day planned for myself and I was going to do a lot of chores, albeit very slowly. Around 9 in the morning I went to my favorite coffee place, Dunkin Donuts, I'm a New Hampshire girl, to get a decaf coffee and then I went home to start gardening. When I got out of the car I felt like my chest was really tight and the difficulty breathing had definitely increased throughout the day. I worked in the garden for a while and then when I came in my breath was very hard to catch. 2 p.m. that day I was not able to stand. I researched it and I called the on-call nurse and I told her that I had really bad seasonal allergies, could I please take something for it? She told me I could take Benadryl. I also looked it up online because I'm that person. And I took a Benadryl and waited for it to kick in. My chest was pounding and with every single heartbeat I had absolute shooting pain. The pain started radiating. It started radiating up my neck and into my eardrum and then down my left arm. Obviously anything having to do with pain in your chest and then your left arm is a little bit scary. I was trying to wait until 5 or 5.30 when my husband would be off work anyway, but I went ahead and called him at 4 p.m. I was laying in bed and it was so hard for me to breathe that he could actually hardly hear me on the phone. He kept asking me to repeat myself and I kept trying to talk louder, but it was really hard. I told him I had to go to the ER. Could he please get off work a little bit early to come get me? He worked about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic, away from where we lived at home. So those minutes waiting for him were some of the longest of my life. I felt like my body definitely wasn't getting enough oxygen. I was also worried about my brand new pregnancy. Finally, he got home and he took me to the ER. And the nice thing about the ER is that if you have shortness of breath and or chest pain, they put you at the front of the line. I got into a room probably within 20 minutes. When the doctor came in, she listened to my symptoms and she did some quick mental work. She told me it was likely that I had some form of pulmonary embolism. The best way to diagnose a pulmonary embolism is a CT scan. Since there is a certain amount of radiation that goes into your body when you do a CT scan, they don't recommend it for pregnancy unless it is definitely a life or death situation. Obviously, a pulmonary embolism could be a life or death situation, so she was going to try to do other things to figure out what was going on with me before doing a CT scan. She got two x-rays of my chest and an ultrasound of my legs. The chest x-rays came back first and they were clear. The ultrasounds of my legs were to look for any clots. If there was a clot in my lungs, hopefully they would have a clot somewhere else in my body to indicate that I, my body was throwing clots for some reason. Luckily, it was the doctor doing the ultrasound. So when she didn't find anything in my legs, she moved the probe up to my chest. I'll never forget, she looked at the screen and she goes, huh, that makes sense. And both my husband and I were like, what, what, what is it? She told us that there was a significant amount of inflammation on my heart and I also had a lot of fluid in the sac around my heart called the pericardium. The medical term for this is pericarditis and cardiac effusion. She told me that the best thing to do was to take a lot of aspirin. She prescribed me the exact milligrams she wanted me to take and also go home and rest as much as possible. She said this type of thing should resolve itself within a week or two and I should be fine, just make sure that I stay off my feet as much as possible. So at five weeks and five days, she moved the probe from my chest to my belly. She knew my pregnancy wasn't big enough to actually be able to hear the baby's heartbeat or to see much at all, but she wanted to just check it. She saw that there was definitely an embryonic sac in there and we were all thrilled to see that it was still there. They prescribed me Norco for the pain and recommended I stay off my feet completely if it was possible. 
The next day I called the infertility specialist that I was working with, the reproductive en endocrinologist, and told her my situation. She told me that she wanted me to get my blood drawn every three days after that so that if I did miscarry, she would be able to see why in the blood draws. So in the days after, I watched a lot of TV, I drank a lot of fluids, and I just waited for the pain in my chest to go away. I was really hopeful for what was coming next and I was excited to get over this little next hump. This is definitely where I'm gonna leave you today because the story gets a little bit worse from here. But just a reminder, my kid made it. He made it and he's fine and he's two and a half now and we're just loving him to death. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Please like and subscribe and can't wait to talk to you later. Bye. The best way to diagnose this, of course, is a PET scan. The best way to diagnose a pulmonary embolism is a CT scan.